Hello, and welcome to the first in what I hope to be a long series of tutorials about Reaper, a DAW that I believe to be one of the best options for, actually the best option for public radio producers and podcasters. This is a piece of software that, that is fairly new on the market and doesn't have a huge following, so there's there's not a lot of information out there about Reaper and its applications for voice-based work. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. And in this first tutorial, I just want to go through a couple main points, which is why should we use Reaper for public media? What are its benefits compared to other DAWs? Um, how to install and set up the program? and how the program is laid out, the different pieces that you're going to be using, and how to save and render a basic project. My goal in this series is to keep the videos pretty short, so I'm not going to go into a ton of depth, but if you have any questions about anything, by all means, I want you to use the comments, um, email me personally, just get a hold of me so I can explain to you better why I think this is the best program for public radio producers. So first things first, what you need to know about Reaper is that it is a digital audio workstation, which is um, often abbreviated to DAW. There's a lot of other programs in this category, most notably Pro Tools, which is another program that from a visual standpoint is very similar to Reaper. You'll also hear people talking about um, Adobe Audition, um, Hindenburg, and a variety of other programs. Um, Audacity as well is a free program. Um, Reaper is not free. Reaper has a wonderful, wonderful 60-day free full-fledged trial, um, but after that they expect you to pay, I believe it's $60 for the, the basic license, which by all means is a steal. Um, a little bit about my background. My name is Jeff Entman. I am a public radio producer and podcaster myself. And back in college, I studied Pro Tools to a large extent, and um, I, I really found it woefully unprepared to do the things that I need to do on a daily basis when I'm producing my podcast. So here's how you get the program. You go to reaper.fm, and you click the download button, and it will take you to the page. And all you need to do is download this, what does it look like? It's 6.5 megabytes. It's a very small program. Um, and one of Reaper's fantastic features is that unlike Pro Tools, unlike Audition, unlike, um, unlike a lot of the other programs, you don't need a powerful computer to run Reaper. Um, it's a very compact program. I run it here on this desktop I use. I also run it on a netbook that I have, um, just a tiny little laptop. And I also have it installed on a thumb drive that I can take around with me and use it on any computer I run into without having to install anything. I just run it right off the thumb drive. And it's a tiny program, which is fantastic. So I already have it installed on my computer. It's a very straightforward setup. But the first time you open Reaper, which is what I'm doing right now, it's going to bring up this window here. And it says you have not selected an audio device. And what, what, what it's trying to say right now is it's trying to say, how am I going to get the audio from the computer out to your speakers? And how am I going to get the audio from your microphone into Reaper? Um, and this is, a, this is a very simple process. And if you're using a Windows computer, for the time being, just stick with wave out, or if you don't have that option, go to direct sound. In, in, a, later, in a later episode, I'm going to explain the benefits of using ASIO recording, which is a really, really powerful way to essentially pump up the, the recording power of your computer without having to do anything too tricky. Um, but that's for a later show. For the time meaning, being, let's just stick with wave out. And that's as simple as setting up the program is. Here we have it installed and it's looking good. I'm just going to make sure. Okay. This is the main part of the program. And you can see there's kind of a lot going on right now, but uh, it's really not as bad as you think it is. The, the main thing or the most basic part of it is this area right here that I'm scrolling over. This is what's called your transport bar. And this is what shows you all sorts of important information about the track where you are located in it. Um, you get access to your play and your pause, your stop, your back to the beginning, fast forward to the end, your record button, your loop, and um, a variety of other things, including your play rate and 
like I said, tons of other things. This is the default setting of the program. And one thing that we're going to cover in this series is how to customize this look so that it's doing absolutely everything it can to make your life easier when you're producing a podcast or a radio show. Um, so one thing we'll talk about later is like getting rid of a ton of these buttons because you're never going to need to use a metronome. Um, because at the, at the end of the day, this is a program that is by default configured to produce music, just like every other DAW with the possible exception of Hindenburg. Um, but what we can do that a lot of other programs can't do is that we can customize this so that it's only showing us what we need and it's showing us that in a very efficient manner. Um, okay, so this is the transport bar. You're going to be using this a lot as you play and pause. You can also do this with the keyboard, which is something else we'll talk about in future episodes. This is the main working space where you're going to be laying out everything, cutting things up and down and sideways. Um, this is where track information is going to be shown. I'll show you this in just a second. It's also showed down here in what's called the mixer. And then you have your toolbar, your uh, ruler or your time scale up here. And then you can't see anything in here, but this is a, a really crucial part of Reaper, which is where we can add markers, um, which in public radio is a fantastic thing that you need to do all the time as you're cutting a piece. But again, that's for a later show. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab, um, I'm just going to grab this interview I did with a man named Pete Brook just recently. And we were talking about prisons and, um, art history and all sorts of other things. Um, and when you drag and drop a piece of audio into Reaper, you'll see this window come up. And what this window is doing is, is it's, it's drawing your, um, it's drawing your peaks, uh, your waveform is another way of saying it. And what I'm doing is I'm zooming out right now using the scroll wheel. And so you can see here, it's built the waveform. And as soon as you do this, you'll notice in your folder that it adds another little file here. This is what's called a repeaks file. And this is Reaper's little drawing of those waveform that it uses in the program. If you delete this, no biggie. It'll just draw it again next time you open the project. So right now, I've got uh, I've got Pete Brooks' interview. And again, the basic way of, of navigating Reaper is using the scroll wheel. If you don't have a mouse, you need a mouse. Um, it will make your life so much easier. So the basic idea is click to go where you want to go. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And let's just hear it. And um, attributes exist within species. Um, power so you can exists see, I can just, uh, I can just scrub around in here all I want. Nose and separated people. Uh, I've been, you know, sadly led the way. So this was a really great show about um, prison photography, um, this blog that Pete runs. And he went out to Sing Sing to um, interview some of the prisoners out there in New York. Um, and it, it turned into a really beautiful show, but this is just the raw audio. So say I want to put some music on this, right? Just super basic edits here. I've got, I've got some, some songs here from a group called Phantom Fauna, which is actually, I believe they're also out of New York and they gave me permission to use their stuff on the show. Um, really, really great ambient music. So if I just want a little bit of texture here, all I've done is I've dragged this onto a new track here. If I hit play now, put my thoughts down on a nice little bit spooky paper, atmosphere in there. Away we went. Nice. And it took a while and I was diligent about it, but I caught the attention of And that's as hard as it is. Um you you might have noticed here that um I've got a bunch of different file formats, right? I, these these here are AIF, which is Apple's lossless format. Um, I have some waves over here, some MP3s. Don't worry about formats. Pretty much anything is going to drag and drop real nice right into the Reaper interface. In fact, if you find a file format that doesn't work in Reaper, I would love to hear about it because I haven't actually been able to find one yet um, as far as audio goes. So this is the basic idea here. You can see there's some track information over here. I'm just going to shrink this guy down a little bit. And there we are. Um, just so you can see this, I'll zoom out so you can see the whole project. And let's just say that you were really happy with this. Obviously you wouldn't be, but let's just say you're really happy with this, um, interview with one little bit of, of audio on it. So what you would do in this case is you would want to save your project, right? And so there's one major issue that people seem to have with 
digital audio workstations when they're first getting started with them. And that is the difference between saving and rendering. I, I just want to pound this home really, really quick. So saving a project is like going to a library where they don't have computers, right? They, there's a, there's a catalog, a card catalog, and you have this, this box of cards. I hope this isn't like a completely antiquated reference. Um, you have this big box of cards and inside each little drawer, you find all these references. And it's like, oh, like there's this book on medieval, um, wrestling and, <laughs> and it's going to be found this part of the library. Um, and you might open up a different drawer and it says, here's a book about cooking lasagna. And it's in this different part of the library, but what it doesn't have in the card catalog is the actual books themselves. And we can use that as an analogy for this situation, because when you save a project, you're essentially saving the card catalog version of it. There's no audio in the file you're saving. So if I say, I want to save this, I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'm going to say, this is Pete, Pete in GIF. Um, Pete and Jeff, it's going to save it as a Reaper project file or a .rpp file. I just want to reiterate that this file contains no audio whatsoever. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So it's going to save it. You're done, right? Um, and that's going to be a tiny little file, tiny, tiny little file. However, if we were going to render this project, what rendering is, is rendering is like writing that book on medieval wrestling or cooking lasagna. Um, this is, this is the audio that you can then go off and send to someone else. Um, so you want to email it to your mom. Um, and when you click render, it's going to bring up this box here with a ton of different options. And we'll go, we'll go into depth on this in another show, but it'll say, what do you want to render? Where do you want to render it to? What format do you want to use? Remember the other one, you can only save it in .rpp, which is not an audio format. And let's just say, I want to save this as an MP3 low enough quality. So I could send it to my mom with an email and, um, let's just render that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's just render that to the desktop and then it'll bring up this window here and it will, um, it'll try to take care of that. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Yeah. So you can see this takes a while and I'm not going to sit here through the process, um, of it, of it rendering this whole file out, but you can see it's, it's generating your finalized product. So again, the difference between rendering and saving is saving makes a file that only Reaper can use and doesn't contain any audio. It just contains references, um, out here and there and all over your computer. But rendering is the process where you take your finished product and you mash it into something that people can actually hear. So that's about all for, for this, uh, this episode. Um, like I said, I'm trying to keep them short. So if you have any questions, by all means, do not hesitate to get a hold of me either through YouTube or down in the comments or send me an email. I, I'm, I'm going to be as accessible as I can be through this process. Here's the, uh, here is the file that I just canceled the rendering out of. Yeah, we're recording. And I've opened this up in a different program here and you can see that this is a, uh, this is our audio here. Cause you know, and it feeds into economics as well. Also interrogate the photography to see if what it was saying tallied with the reality that had been. So yeah, this is, know, um, this is obviously not the, the show that, that we wound up releasing for that. The show, the show was actually a, a great success. And, um, if you're interested in checking it out, um, I'm going to, I'm going to try and keep the plugs to the minimum here. Um, this is the show I produce. It's called here be monsters. And the episode I'm talking about here is called the other 1%. And it's this great interview with Pete Brooke, who just knows tons of things about, um, the American prison system. In any case, that's neither here nor there. Um, thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, just hit me up, stay tuned for more episodes on how to use Reaper in the public media and podcasting workflow. Thanks for watching.